President Trump spent much of 2018 agreeing with dictators and doubting U.S. intelligence. After the intel community found that Russia had interfered with the U.S. elections through various means like fake events and groups on social media shared by Russian troll networks, the president was given the chance to confront Vladimir Putin. He was standing right next to him during his summit in Helsinki. Here is how that went down. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. I don't see any reason why it would be. Donald Trump would later claim he meant to say he didn't see why it wouldn't would not be Russia. That's entirely not believable. What he said is what he said. And then there's this. After Kim Jong-un made vague agreements of denuclearization set to great fanfare at a summit in Singapore, uh, the New York Times reported North Korea had been expanding its missile program. As experts say, much of the country's nuclear and intercontinental ballistic missile testing infrastructure likely remains intact. When pressed uh, on this in a Fox News interview over the weekend, Here's what the president had to say. And I think we had a real decision as to which way to go in North Korea. And certainly, at least so far, I'm very happy with uh, the way we went. I have a very good relationship. Even though there's talk about that they're putting yeah, new sites. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. I don't believe that. Uh, I don't. And, you know, could be. And, and which is, if, it, if that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. That's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. It is what it is. That's the kind of stuff the president has taken to saying these days. And now after weeks of changing stories from Saudi Arabia over murdered Washington Post writer Jamal Khashoggi, this man, and a final admission that he was killed shortly after entering the Saudi consulate in Istanbul in early October, the president gave a response consistent with his talk on dictators and their bad, even horrifying behavior, again, downplaying U.S. In intelligence agency assessments. They didn't make a determination. Uh, and it's just like I said, I think it was very, maybe he did, maybe he did. They did not make that assessment. The CIA has looked at it. They've studied it a lot. They have nothing definitive. And the fact is, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. It is what it is. Joining me from London now, NBC News chief global correspondent, Bill Neely. Bill, uh, this, uh, the president's comments and his press release from yesterday are reverberating around the world. We are seeing stronger reaction to this uh, than, than we've seen to many other things that the president has done. Earlier today, President Trump thanked the kingdom of Saudi Arabia for helping to keep oil prices low. Uh, what are the Saudis saying about it? Uh, yeah, Ali, I'll, I'll answer that in just a second. But just listening to your uh, amazing string of quotes reminds me, uh, I'm going to risk a quotation here, George Orwell, who wrote not very far from where I'm sitting right now. He wrote about political language mm -hmm. and he said it was designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable. Yeah. And that's actually that what President like Trump what has doing. done in the last 24 hours. Yeah, on, on, on that statement, uh, which r carries huge weight. It's an official White House document. It's not a series of early morning tweets. And that statement uh, and his comment on Saudi oil prices has gone down very, very badly in Europe, across the Western alliance, and especially in Turkey, which wanted Saudi Arabia punished not defended by the U.S. The Gulf Arabs, well, they love it because it defends the Saudis so thoroughly. And in Saudi Arabia, well, they couldn't have written it better themselves. A U.S. president absolving Saudi rulers, not just for the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, but the slaughter in Yemen as well. Here's what the Saudi foreign minister had to say to CNBC's Hadley Gamble. Take a listen. Saudi Arabia was declared guilty without people seeing evidence, without people knowing the facts, and this has continued since. We have the official spokesperson of the State Department saying the reports of the CIA report are inaccurate, and we have the President of the United States saying the reports of the CIA report are not accurate. Wait until you see the legal steps that are taken against those who committed this crime, and the procedure of putting a place to prevent it from happening, and then judge us. If you think our trials and our investigation is a Mickey Mouse one, criticize us, but wait until it's done. 
So look, Ali, the president's statement defending the Saudis has two effects. The first is the signal that it sends to dictators, to autocrats around mm -hmm. the world. His statement was, was basically a shrug, wasn't it? Maybe the crown prince knew about it, maybe he didn't. Shrug. He's giving the crown prince cover for murdering a Washington Post journalist. And he's giving a green light, I think, to strong men around the world. You murder your political opponents, I'll turn a blind eye, and that won't be lost on, well, on Vladimir Putin, for example. But secondly, we know this was a test case for US foreign policy, a moment when American values met murder and values lost. Trump has now wow. firmly said this is a foreign policy of dollars and arms and oil and jobs. It's got nothing to do with values. It's America first, values last. Show me the money to hell with the consequences. That will create deep cracks in America's alliance with the world, with London here, where I'm uh, speaking from, with Berlin, with Paris. The micro effect in the Middle East is, I think, uh, just as dangerous in a way. The U.S. can't be seen anymore and won't be seen as any kind of independent go-between. It's not. It has now tied itself to the Saudi crown prince, uh, of course, to Israel, uh, and it sees Iran as an enemy. Maybe there's nothing new there, but as Senator Bob Corker put it, this is a White House moonlighting uh, as a public relations firm for the Crown Prince. And that's a Republican chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations yep. Committee with a pretty remarkable swipe at a Republican president, Ali. Uh, in, that, in that battle between murder and values, uh, values lost. Bill, thank you for that. Bill Neely, our chief global correspondent, putting this into sharp relief for us. I'd like to bring in Toronto Star Washington Bureau Chief Daniel Dale. My Fellow Torontonian, uh, Daniel, you have chronicled uh, a lot of what Donald Trump uh, talks about. We've heard him talk a lot about how much he likes the Saudis. Let's just go back a couple of years. Listen with me. Yeah, I like the Saudis. They're very nice. I make a lot of money with them. They buy all sorts of my stuff, all, all kinds of toys from Trump. They pay me millions and hundreds of millions. Saudi Arabia, and I get along great with all of them. They buy apartments from me, they spend 40 million, 50 million. Am I supposed to dislike them? I like them very much. So, so Daniel, here's the issue. There are lots of reasons why Saudi Arabia probably needs America more than America needs Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia is not buying hundreds of millions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars worth of stuff from America, as Donald Trump claims. It's about $14.5 billion. They're not creating hundreds of thousands of jobs, as Donald Trump claims. It's about 17,500 jobs. And we don't get more oil from Saudi Arabia than we do from Canada. This sounds, this smells weird. It smells like Donald Trump is going absolutely out of his way to not upset the sensibility of the Saudi uh, rulers. I agree. And we've seen this before, where even for Trump, uh, even by his standards of strange behavior, the extent to which he goes out of his way not to anger autocrats is eyebrow raising. And I think there are a number of possible reasons, and it's impossible for us to pinpoint any given one. We know that he has indeed had financial entanglements with Saudi Arabia, despite his current protestations that he doesn't. We know that they flattered him very early in his presidency, that, that famous orb photo. You know, they, they pulled right. out all the, spot, all the stops to, to make him feel like he was, he was king of the the world. And, you know, there is John Bolton and others uh, in his administration in his ear telling him that Iran is the real enemy here, Saudi is not. But then I think, you know, we, we shouldn't be so quick to simply rule out personal affinity. You know, he admires autocratic leaders. He admires leaders who use violence to silence people who oppose them. We've seen this over and over with Putin, with Kim. He likes them more than democratic leaders. And so in this case, I think it's, it's also possible, in addition to the other things, that Trump simply has more sympathy for the autocrat who silenced, murdered the dissident than he does for the, the dissident himself. Let's put a, talk a little business here. Donald Trump tweeted earlier, uh, oil prices getting lower, great, like a big tax cut for America and the world. Enjoy, $54 was just $82. Thank you to Saudi Arabia, but let's go lower. So there's a bunch of things going on right now. First of all, as I said, we get more oil from Canada than we do from Saudi Arabia. Uh, secondly, um, American oil sort of has a sweet spot for American oil production, and $54 is at the very low end of that sweet spot, much lower than that, as the president is calling for, affects oil production from uh, parts of the country that frack. And the third part is he's saying thank you to Saudi Arabia within 24 hours of the world saying that his response to Saudi Arabia was inadequate.
Yes, and this is the classic Trump double down. I, I think what he was trying to do there is make it seem as if there was some sort of benefit for America in the way he handled the, the Khashoggi situation the day before. He's telling his, his gullible voters, look, you know, I was nice to Saudi Arabia. They're giving you something back. They're giving you money. And that's, of course, not at all how it works, but, but that's his spin here. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.